Okay, folks, we left off on page 106. Um, we cleared our, our replace formats and we closed that, that box there on step 14. So now we're going to work with themes. So themes are actually pretty interesting because they, they not only work within Excel, but they can work within Excel and Word and PowerPoint and everything. So pretty interesting. So if you have a theme that you want to use for multiple documents that are in maybe Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, you can do that. So you can share a theme or choose one of the default themes that Office gives to you um, and use it for all your documents. So I'm on page 107, top of page 107, change the work, workbooks theme. So you're going to need to be in the page layout tab. So you're going to want to be in sales report, worksheet, Go to page layout, and on the left hand side is where the themes are located, the themes button. <clears throat> if you click that and you hover over top of these different things, you'll see it changing before your eyes. Okay, so you can just kind of find a bunch of those and just kind of see how they look. <clears throat> I wouldn't change anything just because on page 108 they're going to have you change it back to the office theme. So you want to be at the office theme. That's the one, one that we're going to be using. So if you turn to page 108, um, there's a little box there sharing the styles and themes like I was discussing earlier. <clears throat> so we're going to actually work on highlighting cells with conditional formats. And basically, what the reason why you might do this, uh, for example, is if you have a negative number you might want it to show up um, highlighted. Um, it might mean something very important to you. So that would be con considered conditional formatting. So on page 109, step one, <clears throat> highlight negative numbers in red. So select the non-adjacent range in step one, E6 through F12. E6 through F12. And then find E16, press and hold the control key down, E16 through F22. So leave that last row. Don't get all the rows. So look at my look at my selection there, and yours should be the same. Go to the home tab in the ribbon, and then find the styles group. So whoop didn't get the home tab. Go to the styles group over here and then we want to go to conditional formatting. So once you click on conditional formatting we want to highlight cells rules and we want to find the less than choice. And once we pick the less than choice we just want to type a zero because if it's less than zero we want it to be something. We want it to be um, we want it to be red text. Just make it red. Okay. And so you can begin to see how that's going to look in the background there. Okay. <clears throat> you can click OK at this point. And in cell D8. So in cell D8. We want to change that to 4576 instead of 4376. So 4576. And now you can see that there were some changes. And since those are positive values, the red text goes away. So press Control Z to undo what you just did because we were just testing it out. So Control Z undo undoes whatever you were doing. <clears throat> I'm on page 111 now. So to use top and bottom rule to highlight the stores with the highest gross sales. So select the range P27 through P46. So P27. So find P27. And go all the way down to P46.
and then we want to click the quick analysis button okay so that's just that little square that's <clears throat> that's down to the right if you're not using 2013 office you might not see this but if you click this and point to the top 10 percent so the live preview actually shows up in pink there you can kind of see it <clears throat> I haven't chosen anything at this point so we're not going to apply this so let's just press the escape key and we'll get out of that we're still selected P27 through P46 so in the home tab there I want you to click uh, whoops in the styles group yeah click the conditional formatting and we want to click the top and bottom rules and click the top 10 items and it should bring up a dialog box here so we want to click the down arrow because we only want five of them we don't want ten and then next to the word width we want to make it instead of light red we want to make it green fill with dark green text and then once you have that done you should see in the background there that it's actually changing things and you can choose OK and accept that conditional formatting so now we want to create a legend here a legend just describes what it is that we're, we're doing here so select cell P49 and type the word light green. So light green is going to mean something. Hit the enter key and let's just make cell P49 the active cell again. And on the home tab, in the styles group, click conditional formatting and then point to the highlight cells rules and once you have that um, pointed uh, click text that contains so we'll find text that contains so format cells that contain the text light green and then I'm on step 4 on page 113 verify that light green appears in the format cells text box <clears throat> and then next to the word with I want to choose green fill with dark green text and then choose OK so it's basically doing the same thing <clears throat> cell P49 is still highlighted so that's still our active cell so now we want to choose cell uh, actually um, step seven we want to click the center button at the top that'll just center that text in the cell now we want to go to cell 049 and type the words top five stores top five stores are going to be light green next to it Okay. and select cell 049 so make sure you get, that's what's selected and in cell in step 9 in the styles group click cell styles and click explanatory text and then select cell 051 so if you look at the the image on page 113 so figure 237 yours should look like that so top five stores are going to be light green next to that and if you look up above you're going to have a couple of light green so check your work and just make sure take a second I'm on page 114 right now <clears throat> I want you to go down to the bottom of your status bar and down here next to the zoom slider there's page break preview so if you click on that and then change the zoom level to about 
thirty percent or something like that. Yeah, we'll make it about thirty <clears> percent. <throat> so you can see here, you've you've got a whole bunch of pages in gray that are showing up there. Um, we're going to actually use this to set the print area. So change the zoom level back to about eighty percent. Whoops. Okay, so I've got mine at about 80%. So they want you to select the non-adjacent range, A1. Okay, so I'm on step two, A1 through F24. Okay, so I've got, that's the first part of it. <clears throat> and then choose A25. Just press the control key down, A25 through P49. Okay, so I've got A25, P49, A1 through F24. We're going to go up and choose the Page Layout tab. And in the Page Layout tab, we are looking for Page Setup Group. And then we're looking for the Print Area button. And then we want to set the Print Area. Okay, so there's our Set Print Area. So the Print Area changes to cover only the non-adjacent ranges that we've highlighted there. Okay, so they want us to go back to cell one to deselect the range. And then they're suggesting that we get back to about 50%. Now you can see that you've got page one, page two, page three, page four, if you scroll around there a little bit. And so what it's trying to tell you is what it's going to look like if you were to actually print that. So you can look on page 116, and you should see the same sort of thing uh, that they have there. So I'm at the bottom of page 116, so we're inserting page breaks. So we did page breaks in Microsoft Word as well. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to point, I'm on step, uh, page 117, step 1, point to the blue dotted, the blue dotted page break directly to the right of column L. Okay. So we have a blue dotted line there. And now when I hover over top of it, I get a split cursor. So I, it changes to a split cursor when I get right over top of it. So drag the page break to the right and out of the print area. And you can see that it kind of goes away there. And then go to the page break in F31. Okay. And drag that as well and just pull it out of the out of sight there. And now you can kind of see that you've got two pages. So it's going to put all that stuff on two pages. Page one is going to be this top stuff. Page 2 is going to be the bottom. It'll probably be tough to read if you print that on a small piece of paper. But click column I. So we have column I to select the entire uh, column there. And we're going to add a manual page break between these, these column H and I. So on page layout, it's on the page layout tab, go to page setup group. I'm in Page Setup Group. Click the Breaks button. So there's Breaks. And then I want to insert a page break. And now I have even pages. So page 2 and page 3 are just going to be split. Okay, so you can come over and maybe uh, select page or uh, cell A1 or A2. And look at the image on page 117, figure 240. I want you to make sure that yours looks exactly like that. Okay, I'm going to stop this video just to keep it short enough, and we'll pick back up on page 118 momentarily.